Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Before we get started, um, I'd like to talk briefly about um, our parent company. It's tough to talk about Fuji Film, Cellular Dynamics, in a 15-minute presentation because it's, our large company is a successful, innovative technology company. It's a, most people don't realize that it's a $20 billion technology company with a $4 billion healthcare arm. It survived crisis by reinventing itself through innovation. If you think about it, Cellular Dynamics, while smaller and um, hasn't had to go through a crisis, is also a technology company. The synergies between the two companies and Fujifilm's regenerative medicine division um, are strong and, and yet to be fully optimized, and I hope to show you some of the promise of that as we go through the presentation. So Fujifilm Cellular Dynamics. To say Cellular Dynamics got off to a great start is an understatement. Um, started by pioneer Jamie Thompson in university, from the University of Wisconsin, quickly came out of the blocks quickly and was recognized, as you can see up there, um, in um, trades like MIT Technology Review and the Scientist Top 10 Innovations. Transform that to today. The second bullet point talks about where we're at today. Today, our partner, Sinata, is in phase two, moving to phase two after successful phase one. So we're not just thinking about going into humans. We're there, and we're there successfully. In addition, we've got four preclinical programs that are all moving along nicely, which I'll provide more detail in a little bit. 170 employees. 170 employees, if you think about it, Cellular Dynamics is a fully integrated biotech company. It's what many biotech companies aspire to be when they get started. We're there. We quickly got there, and we've been there. We got there on the tool side, which we'll talk a little bit more also. But we're also there, as you can see, by those preclinical programs with four robust, capable thera therapeutic programs. And finally, we've got two divisions, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about as well. So the two divisions are driven by science, the two divisions within cellular dynamics. And it starts with IPSCs, right? We start with donors. We start with blood donors, and we translate that, and um, we take those cells. We take those cells, and we move them back into immaturity. And from immaturity, we can go in multiple directions. If you go to the right side of the slide, we move to the therapeutic side. Because we're, the cells are immature, we can manufacture cardiomyocytes, as you will see from our, um, or cardiac progenitor cells, and you'll see from our cardiac program that we have with Takeda, and other cell, cell programs like neurons, et cetera. You move to the left side, we go to the tool side of the equation, or the life science, what we call the life science business. And here, we're partners with companies in like, um, let's just say, Big Pharma and Biotech on the tool side by providing them with cells which allow them to do disease and dish models, safety testing, tox testing, and other, other models, which I'll get into more detail on as well. So that's the, how we get to the two businesses via our science description. The therapeutic programs. If, if you're aware of the therapeutic programs, they're doing really well. So I have three takeaways on this slide. One, from a Parkinson's standpoint, we're getting closer and closer to the clinic. We have had IND discussions with the FDA. We know it's expected, and we're moving in that direction. The second takeaway is all of these programs continue to move positively along. All of them continue to move positively along, and two of the four programs are partnered. We've got a partnership on the congestive heart failure program with Takeda, and not yet announced, we've got a partnership in the immune oxide with um, well-established and well-known venture capital. More details will be coming on that shortly. On the ocular side of the equation, Fujifilm's first foray from a regenerative medicine, regenerative medicine standpoint into a spin-out, Opsis. Carter talked yesterday about Opsis and the therapeutic programs within Opsis. I call it a platform within a platform, if you will. And we also have a partnership there with NEI on the RPE program. More detail coming on that. But um, all these programs continue to move forward. We're getting closer and closer to clinical trials with our own internal programs. And we're partnering two of the four programs already. And I think the chances of partnering another one of those programs within the next six to nine months is really good. 
So let's talk a little bit more about Parkinson's in a little bit more detail. So clearly, from an unmet need standpoint, we're not alone in recognizing the unmet need in Parkinson's. Current existing treatments don't address the unmet need, especially as it relates to the loss of dopamine neurons. But we're not the only <laughs> cell therapy company that's discovered the fact that we've got to play here. So, um, but what sep separates CDI apart from other cell therapy companies is our ability to manufacture authentic dopamine neurons. And from an IPSC standpoint, we are the leader, the global leader from a non-academic standpoint. We're, we're moving the program ahead. IPSC, non-academic, we're the global leader. Takahashi, Dr. Takahashi in Japan is certainly moving the program forward. We're excited. We're looking for them to be very successful from an academic standpoint and proof of concept for the platform. Preclinically, everything's looking good. Engraftment looks good so far. Integration looks good. Dopamine release looks good. So the program continues to move forward. Cardiac, this again, this is the one we're partnered with Takeda. So again, unmet need is there. We're not the only company, again, in the space that recognizes the opportunity for replacement cell therapy in a disease like congestive heart failure. Replacement could be really important from a heart muscle standpoint. However, again, what sets us apart is CDI's legacy in cardiomyocytes and cardiac progenitor cells is well established. We were first. We were there, and I think that's one of the reasons why Takeda understood and has partners with us. The other thing, if you think about it in the, from an IND enabling standpoint, the studies that are being conducted with partners at the University of Wisconsin, Texas Heart Institute and MPI, we've got a great partnership getting us ready for clinical trials there. And if you look at the results preclinically, things are moving along well from an efficacy and safety standpoint. Oncology, our T cell program, this is the one that, again, is just recently formulated more news from a partnership standpoint, which is recently formulated. We have the ability, what sets us apart here, is we have the ability to manufacture um, iPSC-derived T cells and NK cells. But in addition, we have done work in macrophages, and we also believe, based on some work we've done internally, we can also do dendritic cells. So you take that with the aspiration, and I think I've heard multiple times in the last day of the aspiration for off-the-shelf solutions in this area. Finally, combine that with extensive genetic engineering, let's just say CAR-T, and thus we end up with a program with, like I said, well-known venture capital to move our program forward. Opsis, Carter uh, talked about this yesterday, um, but I'll just touch on it briefly. The un <laughs> Again, the previous presentations earlier today have certainly demonstrated the unmet need in, in blindness. Um, but the unique thing here from an OPSIS standpoint is, again, you take the, the know-how and the expertise from Dr. Gam's lab at the University of Wisconsin in lead optimization. You take the FCDI know-how from a reprogramming and a manufacturing standpoint, and you combine those, and we have a powerful, we have a very powerful program that's moving forward. It's a platform within a platform with what I said. There's three opportunities here, photoreceptor, progenitor program, an RPE program, and a combination program. All that is, um, is moving forward. And in fact, I don't know whether Carter mentioned it yesterday or not, but we are in the process of seeking partners um, here as well on this program. So that's the therapeutic side. Now let's transition over to the, what I think CDI is probably more well known for, especially from a legacy standpoint, is on what we call the tool side or the life science side. C FCDI's history on the left side of the graph, if you will, from a discovery standpoint and a preclinical development standpoint, by providing our cells, by providing our cardiomyocytes, for example, our hepatocytes, um, neurons, dopaminerons, <laughs> To, with our partners to create disease and disc models, um, phenotypic screening solutions, as well as um, safety tox um, testing and from a preclinical standpoint. That's well established. We will continue to do that. No changes there. But what we aspire to is to move right. Um, we have partnerships on the manufacturing side already from an assay standpoint. And we also aspire to, and, um, 
um, Blake mentioned this early yesterday morning, we can de-risk pivotal clinical trials through targeted um, diverse um, targeting of uh, cells. So we believe in that model. We, that's where we're going to invest in the future. So we'll continue to be great from an iCell and MyCell standpoint on the left side of the graph. We aspire to move strategically to the right as well. So breadth of expertise, the top row is the core. It's FCDI core. When you think of IPSC reprogramming and you think of Episoma reprogramming, that's what you think of. You think of, um, you think of FCDI. Our strength, our scientific strength, and our IP strength there is, is without question. From a differentiation standpoint, obviously, our, I think our therapeutic programs and our success of our therapeutic programs and our success on, on the tool side of the equation speak for themselves with our ability to differentiate reproducible, robust, high quality um, cells. What's new on the top line is we're going to have a GMP solution from a manufacturing standpoint. First, first to support our own therapeutic programs, but not solely to support our own therapeutic programs. We're looking for partners there as well. So by the middle-ish of 2019, that top row will be formidable when you think about IPSCs from a reprogramming standpoint, a differentiation standpoint, and our ability to manufacture in GMP setting with a brand new building right next to our site in Madison, Wisconsin. The bottom row talks about the additional solutions that we can do from an assay development. We have a great process um, engineering team on site, gonna be great to translate from preclinical status as we move into GMP manufacturing. And then finally, and we do today and we'll continue to do in the future, we can support things from a regulatory standpoint. So the benefits of partnering with FCDI, when you look at the, when you look at the word partnering and you look at the 70 tables outside and the whole meaning of this conference and the word partnering can be you know, somewhat, I guess, um, overused. But in the case of FCDI, and you th first you think in the case of Fuji, Fujifilm, Fujifilm is successful today because of the ecosystems that it created and the partnerships that it created to innovate and reinvent itself and become the $20 billion company it is today. Same thing with CDI. If you think about our model on the tool side, it's about partnerships. It's about partnerships with big pharmas and biotechs. And on the therapeutic side, we've already quickly partnered with two of our four programs, and I think another one will come again within the next six to nine months. So partnering is our model. We also have a great partner with Fujifilm. Fujifilm is an excellent partner. Fu Fuji is investing in, in CDI. They're investing in us right now in, in 2019. Those therapeutic programs, a lot of people ask the question, well, when you're done with those therapeutic programs, then what? Well, we're not done. We've got platforms that we're going to be investing behind that to restart that therapeutic program engine and keep it moving in the future. And with that, on behalf of myself and the FCDI team, I'd like to say thank you very much.